The blade flashed silver in the moonlight, its razor-sharp edge slicing through yielding flesh with sickening ease. Crimson bloomed across the white silk blouse like a perverse flower, spreading with each gurgling breath, each weakening struggle of the woman pinned beneath her attacker. Detective Samantha Ray stared down at the body, numb fingers still curled around the grip of her gun. She'd been first on the scene, called to the remote estate on the outskirts of town by a frantic 911 call. But she was too late. Always too late these days, it seemed. She turned away from the gruesome sight, fighting the bile rising in her throat. That's when she saw it. A single long-stemmed rose lying on the blood-splattered marble, its white petals pristine and untouched. Her blood turned to ice in her veins. It couldn't be. With trembling hands, she crouched down and plucked a crisp white card from beneath the rose. Two words were scrolled in an achingly familiar script. Hello, daughter. A face flashed through her mind, cold gray eyes, a mouth curled in a cruel smirk. A ghost from her past, a monster that still haunted her darkest nightmares. Her father. Carver Ray Dottal. But that was impossible. Carver was locked away in a maximum security prison, serving a life sentence for the brutal murder of Samantha's mother 20 years ago. The murder she'd witnessed as a terrified eight-year-old, clutching a bloody teddy bear. The murder that shattered her world and sent her into the foster system, until she'd clawed her way out by joining the force. Determined to save others from the monster who'd stolen her childhood, now it seemed the monster had returned with a vengeance, taunting her, luring her into a twisted game only he understood the rules to. Samantha swore savagely beneath her breath, fighting the dread coiling in her gut. She wouldn't let him win. Not this time. No matter what dark secrets she had to unearth, what forbidden desires she had to confront, she would stop him even if it meant staring into the abyss of her own twisted family tree and facing the demons that lurked in its branches. Even if it meant teetering on the knife's edge between duty and her heart's most guilty yearnings. She owed her mother that much. Samantha took a shaky breath, squared her shoulders, and stepped into the sprawling mansion to face the first of many secrets yet to be revealed. Little did she know, a pair of fathomless gray eyes watched her from the shadows. Hungry. Waiting. The precinct hummed with muted activity, fluorescent lights casting harsh shadows across drawn faces. Samantha slumped at her desk, an untouched mug of coffee cooling at her elbow as she sifted through the crime scene photographs for the hundredth time. Each image was a punch to the gut, glassy eyes staring into oblivion, porcelain skin marred by vicious strokes of crimson. But it was the roses that mocked her from every glossy print pristine white, laid with deliberate care beside each body. Their message was clear. I'm here. I'm watching. And the worst part? She had no leads. No fingerprints, no DNA evidence. Just a ghost from her past playing a sick game of cat and mouse. Daring her to catch him. She scrubbed a weary hand over her eyes, the seeds of a migraine throbbing at her temples. Sleep had become a distant memory, replaced by a constant litany of self-recrimination. She should have seen this coming. Should have known he'd find a way to slither back into her life, poisoning everything he touched. Ray Dot. The captain's gruff voice snapped her out of her dark reverie. My office. Now. Samantha's stomach nodded as she wove through the bullpen. Had they pulled her off the case? Discovered her connection to the prime suspect? Captain O'Malley regarded her from behind his cluttered desk, bushy brows furrowed over shrewd eyes. Shut the door. She complied, then stood rigid before him, bracing for the blow. I'm assigning you a partner for this case. Relief and irritation warred within her. Sir, with all due respect, I work better alone, one. This isn't a debate, detective. O'Malley's tone brooked no argument. You're too close to this one. I need to know you'll have someone watching your back. As if on cue, a knock sounded at the door. Come in, O'Malley barked. The door swung open, revealing a man who made Samantha's breath hitch in her throat. 
tall and lean, with jet black hair and stormy gray eyes that seemed to peer straight through her defenses. Detective Ray, meet Aiden Byrne. Transferred from Vice last week. O'Malley waved a meaty hand between them. He'll be your partner on the Rose Killer case. Aiden stepped forward, extending a hand. Pleasure to meet you, Detective. I've heard great things. His voice was a low rumble, his grip strong and sure. Samantha returned the handshake on autopilot, her skin prickling with awareness at his touch. There was something about him. Something that called to her on a primal level, even as it set off warning bells in her head. A magnetism she couldn't seem to tear herself away from. She cleared her throat, reclaiming her hand. Likewise. Though I'm not sure what you've heard. I'm hardly the precinct's golden girl at the moment. O'Malley shot her a quelling look. You're my best detective, Ray. Bar none. You'll catch this son of a bitch. He turned to Aiden. She knows this case inside out. Follow her lead and you'll do fine. Understood, sir. Aiden's gaze lingered on her, inscrutable. Good. Now get out there and nail this bastard. Samantha strode from the office, Aiden falling into step beside her. She could feel the heat of his body, smell the clean bite of his cologne. It made her hyperware. On edge. So, partner, where do we start? She side-eyed him as she collected her coat. First things first. You read the case files? Forwards and backwards. At her skeptical look, he shrugged. I believe in being thorough. Glad to hear it. She headed for the elevator, jabbing the call button with more force than necessary. Because thoroughness is the only way we'll catch this psycho. The doors opened, and she stepped inside, Aiden right behind her. As they began to descend, she fought the irrational urge to bolt. To put as much distance as possible between herself and this man who seemed to unravel her composure with a single look. Tell me, Detective Ray, he said quietly, his eyes gleaming in the dim elevator light. Do you make a habit of antagonizing your partners? Or am I a special case? I don't trust easily, she bit out. I especially don't trust men who think they can waltz in and... Crack a case I've been killing myself over for weeks. He chuckled, a dark, rich sound that slithered down her spine. I'm not here to step on your toes or steal your thunder. I'm here to help catch a killer. He stepped closer, crowding her space. Even if that means following you into the darkest corners of this twisted little rabbit hole. Samantha swallowed hard, her back pressed against the elevator wall. And if I tell you to back off? He leaned in his breath whispering across her cheek. Not a chance. I play for keeps, Samantha Ray. Her name rolled off his tongue like whiskey in sin. You're stuck with me. For better or worse. The elevator dinged, doors sliding open. Aiden stepped back, leaving her off kilter and reeling. She pushed past him, needing space, needing air. Needing to remember the cardinal rule that had gotten her this far in a man's world trust no one. But even as she strode into the precinct lobby, she could feel his eyes on her. Watching. Assessing. Like he could see straight to the heart of her. And all the secrets she kept locked away. God help her, this case might just be the death of her yet. And her new partner might be the one holding the smoking gun. The crime scene was a tableau of horror, as familiar to Samantha as her own fractured reflection. Blood pooled on the polished hardwood, seeping into the cracks and crevices like a macabre painting. And at the center of it all, another rose. White as fresh fallen snow, mocking in its purity. Detective Ray? A uniformed officer approached her, notepad in hand. The victim's husband is here. Says he found her when he got home from work. Samantha nodded curtly. I'll talk to him. Burn, you take the scene. Aiden quirked a brow but didn't argue, already moving towards the body with fluid grace. She watched him for a moment, the way he surveyed the carnage with a cool, assessing gaze. Like a predator sizing up his prey. Shaking off the disquieting thought, she turned to the ashen-faced man hunched on the front steps, shock blanket draped over his shoulders. Mr. Adler? I'm Detective Ray. 
I know this is difficult, but I need to ask you a few questions. An hour later, she had a migraine pounding behind her eyes and a lead that had turned to ash in her mouth. The husband had an airtight alibi, a dozen co-workers vouching he'd been in a meeting at the time of the murder. She found Aiden crouched beside the body, long fingers encased in latex as he examined the fatal wounds. Find anything useful? He glanced up, eyes like quicksilver in the fading light. Plenty. Your perp's left-handed, for starters. And he knew the victim. See these hesitation marks? He had a personal connection to her. Samantha frowned, crouching down beside him. The husband? No. These aren't the wounds of a scorned lover. Aiden sat back on his heels. This is the work of someone with a deep-seated hatred. A hatred born of years of festering resentment. Sounds like you're speaking from experience. His mouth twisted into a mirthless smile. Let's just say I've seen my share of monsters hiding in plain sight. Before she could press him further, his cell phone buzzed. He glanced at the screen, brows knitting together. I have to take this. Excuse me. He rose smoothly to his feet and ducked beneath the crime scene tape, murmuring into the phone as he strode away. Samantha stared after him, that prickle of unease skittering down her spine once more. Who was Aiden Byrne, really? And what secrets was he hiding behind those storm cloud eyes? Her own cell phone chirped, jolting her from her troubled thoughts. She glanced at the display, her blood running cold. Unknown caller. Hard in her throat, she lifted the phone to her ear. Hello? Hello? Did you like my present, Sammy? The voice was a poison-laced purr, sickeningly familiar. I picked her just for you. Gavra dot dol. The name tasted like ashes on her tongue. What do you want? Now, is that any way to greet your long-lost father? And here I thought you'd be happy to have a family reunion. You're not my family. You're a monster. Oh, Sammy. You have no idea. A dark chuckle crackled across the line. But you will. Soon enough, you'll see the monster in the mirror, too. You're insane. I'm nothing like you. But even as the words left her mouth, a flicker of doubt crept in, insidious and cold. We'll see about that. Tell me, how's that new partner of yours working out? A beat of silence, laden with malice. He's quite the looker, isn't he? It'd be a shame if something happened to him. Fear clutched at her heart, icy tendrils burrowing deep. You stay away from him, you hear me? This is between us. Oh, Sammy. So young. So naive. Everything that matters to you is fair game. Another chuckle, colder than the last. But don't worry. I'll be seeing you very soon. Until then, sweet dreams. The line went dead, dial tone echoing in her ear like a scream. Samantha stood frozen, the phone slipping from her numb fingers to clatter on the blood-stained floor. Her gaze sought out Aiden, still deep in conversation across the street. As if, sensing her scrutiny, he turned, their eyes locking through the dance of red and blue lights. And in that moment, Samantha knew two things with bone-deep certainty. One, her father would stop at nothing to destroy her and everyone she held dear. And two, Aiden Byrne was either her damnation or her salvation. But come hell or high water, she was about to find out which. Even if it meant staring into the abyss and praying it didn't stare back. The precinct was a hive of activity, phones ringing and keyboards clacking. But all Samantha could hear was the echo of her father's voice. His thinly veiled threats, the malevolent glee dripping from every word. She stared blankly at the case files spread across her desk, the crime scene photos blurring before her stinging eyes. How could she focus on the dead when the living were in such grave danger? A steaming mug appeared in her line of sight, the rich aroma of coffee cutting through the fog. She glanced up to find Aiden standing beside her desk, his own mug in hand. Thought you could use a pick-me-up. His smile was gentle, understanding. Rough day? She wrapped her hands around the mug, letting the warmth seep into her chilled bones. That's an understatement. 
He perched on the edge of her desk, his nearness both comforting and unsettling. Want to talk about it? She shook her head, a bitter laugh escaping her lips. Trust me, you don't want to know the sordid details of my family drama. Try me? His gaze was steady, unwavering. I'm a good listener. And God help her, she wanted to tell him. Wanted to unburden herself of the secrets that had haunted her for so long. The scars that had never truly healed. But she couldn't. Not yet. Not until she knew beyond a shadow of a doubt that he could be trusted. Maybe another time. She took a sip of coffee, the liquid scalding her tongue. Right now, we need to focus on catching this bastard before he strikes again. Aiden nodded, his expression turning grim. I may have a lead on that front. Remember those hesitation marks I pointed out at the scene? She frowned, setting aside her mug. What about them? I've seen marks like that before. On a case, I worked back in Vice. He leaned forward, lowering his voice. A case involving the Rossi crime family? Samantha's blood turned to ice in her veins. The Rossis were notorious, their tendrils snaking through every dark corner of the city. Drugs, weapons, human trafficking. There was no sin they wouldn't commit for the right price. And Carver? Carver had been one of their top enforcers before his arrest. The brutal right hand of Don Rossi himself. You think the Rosses are involved in this? Her voice sounded far away, even to her own ears. I think it's a possibility we can't afford to ignore. Aiden's jaw clenched, a muscle ticking beneath the stubbled skin. And if they are, we need to tread very carefully. Samantha's mind raced, puzzle pieces slotting into place with sickening clarity. Her father's cryptic threats, his seeming omniscience. What if he was still pulling strings from behind bars, using his old mafia connections to terrorize her, to cast a pall of fear over her every waking moment? We need to talk to Carver. The words tasted like bile on her tongue. See what he knows. Aiden's eyes widened fractionally. You want to confront him? Samantha, that's exactly what he wants. I know. But what choice do we have? She pushed to her feet, resolve hardening in her gut. He's the key to all of this. I can feel it. Aiden rose as well, his hand coming to rest on her arm. The heat of his touch seared through her shirt, branding her skin. Then I'm coming with you. She started to protest, but he silenced her with a look. Partners, remember? For better or worse. Something in his tone, in the intensity of his gaze, made her throat go dry. There was a weight to those words, a meaning that went beyond the professional. Beyond the simple bond of partners thrown together by circumstance, dot, dot. But now was not the time to examine it. Not with a killer on the loose and her father's shadow looming over them both. Okay. She took a deep breath, steeling herself for the battle ahead. Let's go beard the lion in his den. The drive to the prison was a tense one, the silence broken only by the hum of the tires on asphalt. Samantha's knuckles were white on the steering wheel, her heart a jackhammer in her chest. She hadn't seen Carver in years, not since his sentencing. Hadn't been able to bring herself to look into the eyes of the man who had shattered her world, who had stolen her mother's life and her own innocence in one fell swoop. But now, now, she had no choice. She had to face him to stare into the abyss and pray it didn't swallow her whole. Beside her, Aiden was a solid presence, his face set in grim lines. She could feel the tension radiating off him, the coiled readiness of a man prepared for anything. And then they were there, the prison looming before them like a hulking beast, all barbed wire and cold concrete. Samantha's steps faltered, a wave of dread crashing over her. Aiden's hand found the small of her back, a silent show of support. She drew strength from the contact, from the knowledge that she wasn't alone in this. Together, they crossed the threshold into the belly of the beast. Carver was waiting for them in the visitation room, a smile playing about his lips. He looked older than Samantha remembered, his hair more gray than black, his face lined and weathered. But his eyes, his eyes were the same, cold and cruel 
glinting with a malevolent intelligence. Well, well, if it isn't my darling daughter, come to pay her dear old dad a visit. His voice was a rasp, roughened by years of cigarettes and screaming. And look, she brought a friend. His gaze raked over Aiden, a spark of recognition flaring. Ah, yes. The ex-vice, cop dot dot. I've heard about you, boy. And you like to stick your nose where it doesn't belong. Aiden met his stare evenly, unflinching. I go where the case takes me. Is that so? Carver leaned back in his chair, hands folded over his stomach. The picture of nonchalance, save for the predatory gleam in his eye. And where, pray tell, has it taken you this time? Samantha leaned forward, drawing his attention back to her. To you, I am to we. We know about your connection to the Rossis. And we know you're behind these murders. Carver laughed, a harsh grating sound that set her teeth on edge. Oh, Sammy. You always were too clever for your own good. He shook his head, a mockery of paternal fondness. But you're only half right. I may be a monster, but I'm not the one holding the leash this time. A chill skittered down Samantha's spine, a sense of foreboding settling in her gut. What are you talking about? Carver's smile widened, sharp and feral. You'll find out soon enough. But I will give you a little piece of advice from father to daughter. He leaned in, his breath fetid and hot against her face. Trust no one. Not the Rosses, not your precious partner, and especially not your own blood. With that cryptic warning, he sat back, a smug satisfaction etched into every line of his face. Now run along, children. Go try to catch the big bad wolf. But remember, he may be closer than you think. And then he was gone a guard escorting him back into the bowels of the prison. Leaving Samantha and Aiden alone, a chill settling over them despite the stifling heat. Samantha's mind raced, trying to make sense of her father's words. Trust no one, not even your own blood. What did he mean? Was he implying that someone in her family was involved? But who? Her mother was long dead, and she had no siblings. A hand on her shoulder startled her out of her spiraling thoughts. Aiden, his face a mask of concern. Samantha? Are you okay? She shook her head, a humorless laugh bubbling up her throat. No. No. No, I'm not okay. I'm so far from okay I can't even see it anymore. He squeezed her shoulder, a silent show of understanding. We'll figure this out. Together. I promise. She wanted to believe him. Wanted to take comfort in his steadfast presence, his unwavering support. But her father's warning echoed in her mind, insidious and unshakable. Trust no one. Even as she allowed Aiden to lead her out of the prison, his hand a steadying force at her back, she couldn't quell the seed of doubt taking root in her heart. Because if she couldn't trust her own partner, then who could she trust? The clock ticked on. Seconds bleeding into minutes, minutes into hours. But for Samantha, time had lost all meaning. She sat at her desk, staring blankly at the case files, her father's taunting words echoing in her mind. Trust no one. Not even your own blood. A knock at her door startled her out of her dark reverie. She glanced up to see Aiden, his face drawn and haggard. We've got another one. Samantha's stomach turned to lead. Where? The old Rossi estate. Abandoned for years, but... He hesitated, something like dread flickering in his eyes. Samantha, the victim. It's your aunt. Jocelyn Carlyle. The world tilted on its axis, the ground opening up beneath her feet. Her Aunt Jocelyn, her mother's free-spirited, rebellious sister. The one who disappeared years ago, cutting all ties with the family. The one with secrets of her own, secrets that had always haunted the edges of Samantha's memories. I have to see her. The words were out before she could stop them, a desperate, clawing need rising in her throat. Aiden's jaw clenched, but he nodded. I'll drive. The Rossi estate was a hulking ruin, a ghost of its former grandeur. 
Weeds choked the once manicured lawns, shattered windows staring out like sightless eyes. And there, in the center of the crumbling foyer, lay Aunt Jocelyn. She was arranged like a macabre work of art, her fiery hair fanned out around her head, her green eyes wide and staring, and clasped in her bloodless hands. A locket, Samantha breathed, her heart stuttering in her chest. Just like Mom's. With shaking fingers, she reached out, prying apart Jocelyn's stiff grasp. The locket was tarnished with age, the intricate engraving worn smooth. But there, on the back, was a tiny raised button, a hidden compartment. Samantha's breath caught, a distant memory surging to the surface. Her mother's voice, soft and sad, as she clutched a twin locket to her heart. Sammy, if anything ever happens to me. Nah. Promise you'll find the other half. Promise you'll uncover the truth. Tears blurred her vision, grief and understanding warring in her heart. All these years, she'd thought her mother's words were the ravings of a broken mind. But now, she pressed the button, the locket springing open with a tiny click. And there, nestled in the velvet lining, was a small, tightly folded note. With bated breath, she extracted it, the paper whisper thin and brittle with age. As she carefully unfolded it, Aiden hovering at her shoulder, three words stared up at her. Three words that made the blood freeze in her veins. Eleanor lives. J. Eleanor, Samantha whispered, the name a half-forgotten prayer on her lips. My grandmother, Diel. But, but, she died before I was born. Aiden's hand found her shoulder, a steadying touch in the maelstrom of her emotions. There's more to this than we thought. More secrets, more lies. Samantha turned to him, a desperate, wild hope flickering to life in her chest. Aiden, what if... What if she's still alive? What if all of this... The murders, the roses, the lockets... What if it's all about her? His eyes met hers, a grim understanding passing between them. Then we need to find her. Before the killer does. The clues fell into place like tumblers in a lock, each revelation clicking with sickening clarity. The old, Blackthorn Manor, abandoned and crumbling on the outskirts of town. Whispered rumors of a woman in white, glimpsed in the overgrown gardens. A ghostly figure, searching for something long lost. Samantha stood before the wrought iron gates, her heart a thundering drum in her chest. Beside her, Aiden was a coiled spring, his hand resting on the butt of his gun. Are you sure about this? His voice was low, laced with concern. We could be walking into a trap. I'm sure. Samantha squared her shoulders, resolve hardening in her gut. If my grandmother is in there, if she's been alive all this time, I have to know. Together, they pushed through the gates, the rusted hinges screaming in protest. The manor loomed before them, a crumbling monument to a dark and twisted history. As they climbed the cracked marble steps, a flicker of movement caught Samantha's eye. There, in the shadows of the portico, a figure in white. A woman, her hair a shock of silver in the gloom. Grandma Eleanor? Samantha's voice cracked, hope and fear warring in her throat. Is... Anna, is that you? The woman turned, her face a map of wrinkles and sorrow. But her eyes? Her eyes were a piercing, familiar green. The same eyes that stared back at Samantha from the mirror every day. Samantha, dot it. Her voice was a hoarse whisper, trembling with emotion. My darling girl, you found me. Tears spilled down Samantha's cheeks as she rushed forward, gathering her grandmother's frail form in her arms. For a moment, she forgot the horror, the heartbreak, the yearning questions on her tongue. For a moment, there was only the miracle of a long-lost love, returned from the grave. But the moment shattered like glass as a cold, mocking laugh echoed across the decrepit foyer. Well, isn't this touching? Samantha whirled, her blood turning to ice in her veins. There, stepping out of the shadows, was a face she'd never thought she'd see again. A face that had haunted her nightmares since she was a child. Hello, Samantha. The man smiled, 
cruel and sharp. Remember me? Uncle Stephen, she breathed, the name tasting like ashes on her tongue. Her mother's brother, long presumed dead. The black sheep of the family, with a streak of madness that had terrified her as a child. Aiden's gun was in his hand, leveled at Stephen's chest. Don't move. Stephen laughed, a sound like shattered glass. Oh, I don't think so. You see, I hold all the cards here. I always have. With a speed belying his age, he lunged forward, wrenching Eleanor from Samantha's grasp. A knife glinted in his hand, pressed to the old woman's throat. All these years I've been watching, waiting, biding my time until the last of the Blackthorn women were within my grasp. His eyes glinted with a fevered light, madness and triumph mingling in their depths. And now, at last, my vengeance will be complete. Why? Samantha's voice shook, horror and desperation clawing at her throat. Why are you doing this? Why? Stephen's face contorted, a mask of rage and old, festering pain. Because they took everything from me. My birthright, my sanity, my very name. All for the sin of being born on the wrong side of the blanket. He pressed the knife harder, a thin line of blood beating on Eleanor's papery skin. But now, now, I will take it all back. Starting with the life of the woman who started it all. Time seemed to slow, the moment stretching like taffy. Samantha's gaze met her grandmother's, a lifetime of love and regret passing between them. And in that moment she understood. Understood the true power of the Blackthorn legacy. Not a curse, but a choice. A choice to let the sins of the past define you, or to rise above them. With a clarity she'd never known, Samantha reached for the locket at her throat. The twin to the one in Jocelyn's cold, dead hands. You're wrong, Uncle Stephen. Her voice rang out, strong and clear. The Blackthorn legacy isn't one of vengeance. It's one of love. The love of a mother for her children. The love of sisters, bound by blood and secrets. The love that endures, even in the darkest of times. She held out the locket, the tiny compartment springing open. And there, nestled in the velvet lining, was a small, tightly folded note. With shaking hands, she extracted it, the words spilling out like a prayer. In the end, all that matters is the love we give. E and M. Stephen's face contorted, confusion and rage warring in his eyes. What, what is this? It's the truth. Samantha stepped forward, heedless of the knife at her grandmother's throat. The truth you've been running from all these years. That no matter what was done to you, no matter how much you were hurt, you are loved. You have always been loved. Tears streaked down Eleanor's lined cheeks, a lifetime of regret and sorrow pouring out. Stephen, my boy, my beautiful broken boy, forgive me. Forgive us all. For a moment, Stephen wavered, the knife trembling in his grasp. And in that moment, Aiden moved. A single shot rang out, deafening in the cavernous foyer. Stephen stumbled back, the knife clattering to the ground. A bloom of red spread across his chest, a look of shocked incomprehension on his face. And then he fell, a marionette with its strings cut. Samantha rushed forward, gathering Eleanor in her arms once more. The old woman sagged against her, a shuddering sob racking her frail form. It's over. Samantha murmured, stroking her grandmother's silver hair. It's all over now. But even as the words left her lips, a cold tendril of unease unfurled in her gut. Because Stephen's last words, whispered through blood-stained lips, echoed in her mind. You think this is the end? A rattling, wheezing laugh. Oh, my dear, sweet Samantha. It's only the beginning. The true legacy of the Blackthorns, is just getting started. And with a final, shuddering breath, he was gone, leaving Samantha alone cradling the last of her bloodline with a creeping, inescapable truth sinking into her bones. That some secrets once unearthed can never be buried again. And some legacies, steeped in blood madness, will haunt you. The sun dipped below the horizon, 
painting the sky in streaks of orange and pink. Samantha stood at the edge of the cliffs, the sea breeze whipping her hair, the salt spray stinging her cheeks. Or, perhaps, it was tears. Tears for the secrets unearthed, the losses endured. Tears for the legacy she'd never asked for, but couldn't escape. Two weeks had passed since that fateful night at Blackthorn Manor. Two weeks of questions and condolences, of piecing together a shattered family history from fragments of faded letters and whispered confessions. Eleanor had told her everything. Of the love affair that had nearly torn the family apart. Of the child born in secret, spirited away to be raised in the shadows. Of the lies and betrayals that had festered like a cancer, poisoning everything they touched. It was all for love, Eleanor had whispered, her hand trembling in Samantha's grasp. The things we do for love, they have the power to heal and to destroy. Destroy Duddle. Like Stephen's twisted vengeance. Like the lives snuffed out in the name of a decades-old grudge. Samantha closed her eyes, the weight of it all pressing down on her shoulders. The weight of the past, of the future. Of the legacy she now carried in her very blood. Penny for your thoughts. She turned, a sad smile tugging at her lips. Aiden stood behind her, hands tucked in the pockets of his leather jacket. The setting sun gilded his features, turning his eyes to molten gold. Just thinking, she murmured, turning back to the sea. About everything. Ad, what comes next? He moved to stand beside her, his shoulder brushing hers. A solid presence, a quiet strength. The one constant in the chaos of the last few months. And what does come next? His voice was soft, gentle. An invitation, not a demand. Samantha took a deep breath, the salt air filling her lungs. Cleansing. Healing. I don't know. But... I think it's time to stop running from the past. Time to start building something new. Something... Better. Aiden's hand found hers, his fingers lacing through hers. A perfect fit. Together? She looked at him, really looked at him. At the man who had stood by her side through hell and back. The man who had seen the darkest parts of her and loved her still. Together, she whispered, and sealed it with a kiss. The sun slipped below the waves, the first stars winking to life in the velvet sky. And there, on the edge of the world, Samantha felt something new take root in her heart. Hope. For a future not defined by the sins of the past, but by the promise of tomorrow. For a love that could weather any storm, heal any wound. For a legacy. Not of blood and secrets, but of redemption. She turned to Aiden, her partner, her love. Her destiny. Let's go home. Hand in hand, they walked into the gathering dusk, ready to face whatever came next. Together.